them mean it. If they don't get happy, ignore them for 30 seconds. Tell them all is well. Now things that ain't straight might be straight by tomorrow because by faith you talked about it today. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows rose, whatever my lot, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say. That's not a lie. That's a lesson. Thou hast taught me to say. When you speak things that don't look true to others, you are increasing your faith. I'm sorry. The Lord said unto Abram after Lot was separated from him. Lift up. Make sure you're reading this. Lift up now your eyes and look from, underscore, the place where you are. Look northward, southward, eastward, westward. For all the land, I wish y'all had faith to see this, that thou seest, to thee I will give it. And I'll give you enough for your seed forever. Now, you that didn't praise automatically, you don't have faith. Because when faith makes an announcement, there's a posture. Especially if it's providing what you lack. If you ask me for $100 and I pull out $500 and you don't look excited... I'm putting 400 back in my pocket because you acting like you deserve what I'm giving. And some of y'all are in here with righteous indignation. The Bible said, blessed are the meek. What comes for the meek? Inheritance, for they shall inherit. I'm sorry, lift up now thine eyes, look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward, for all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed, how long? Lord, I wish there was a Bible-loving church, but let's give them some time. But I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. I'll give you so much that can't no man number the dust of the earth. Then shall thy seed also be numbered. That's why he's Abram, because right now he's the father of nothing. Abram means a father being elevated. Abraham is the father of many. So some of you are going up, but you're going up with nothing to enjoy. Empty. Oh, I don't have to pray about money no more. I've got plenty of that. So why are you not happy? Because my joy is not in money, but your sadness was in broke. See, you're lying. Because when you was broke, Lord, if you just get me, Lord Jesus. So now how are you going to say, see, you cheated God out of a praise, right? And now you're trying to transition all the emotions away from stuff. But when you didn't have no stuff, you were emotional. I can't stand this car. Keep breaking down. Now you got two cars and don't praise them for one. And that's why God has employed the repo man. A foreclosure process. At certain times, illness. I'm, Bishop, here we go again. Thank God I ain't got no complaints in my mind over here. But somebody over here, I don't believe God puts illness on people. And when certain people disobeyed him, he gave them hemorrhoids. And if any of you experience that, just know 
that's a part of a plague. They called it the botch of Israel. God will employ death. Because if you're going to complain for a living, you might as well die and be quiet. But if you're going to trust God and walk it out, then complaints should not be on your agenda. What should be on that agenda is I will bless the Lord. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Verse 17. I told y'all I'm going to keep teaching better and better because I can't wait on y'all any longer. Arise. Walk through the land in the length of it, in the breadth of it, because I'm about to give it to you. Then Abraham once again removed his tent, went to the next place of living, which was called Mamre, which is in Hebron, and there he built his second altar. And he built that altar unto the Lord. Everywhere he went and claimed, he gave God a permanent posture. And some of y'all get things and then God don't get what he got when you were broke. Now you come to church less because you like your new house. I'm painting on Sunday. No, no, you never ever take what you get and put it over God. You paint that house later. See, I need some old school folk who know that we didn't do nothing on Sunday. Listen, Kerry, I'm still like that. Sunday is God's day all day. Even though churches ain't open no more on Sunday night, it used to be God's day all day. Even with a visiting church in the afternoon. And if you were from a Pentecostal deliverance church and they say we cancel in Sunday night, they meant service, but you were going to have prayer. And sometimes that prayer was two hours. You'd be like, we might as well have church. It became a tarry service. They found somebody with a devil. Verse 17, arise, walk through the land. The length of it, I know I'm rehearsing the text. The breadth of it, I'm about to give it to you. Abraham removed his tent because he said, being that God spoke to me where I am about something bigger than what I have, I need to walk by faith. Let me talk to three people for the rest of the night. Every time God gives you a real order, you ought to take real steps. I get tired of folks, I heard the Lord, then you ain't got no step. I'm waiting on him now to tell me what to do. No, no, no. That's not how it works. That's why I want to talk about faith, because that's not how it works. Look at somebody, if I'm your pastor, and tell somebody that I am pastoring, that is not how it works. Until God does not speak to you, then give you the instruction of where to go, and then carry you there. Let me talk to folk who are grown enough to know they made some mistakes in their Christian walk. Faith without works. Whatever you have faith for, you got to work for. Nothing just happens. 
Say that to two people that look friendly. Nothing just happens. You're going to be shocked in about the next 10 minutes. He went from Mamre, which was in Hebron. And he built an altar there. Now, let me show you what faith is trying to do for us tonight. And the first Lord, God bless me with favor. The first 10 to really respond because they catch it. Let them live it. And that's this. Mamre, Mamre, M-A-M-R-E, means strength. You don't have it yet. I see you trying to beat the other nine, but you don't have it because I'm not finished. Hebron means association. So here is God saying, if you walk by faith, I'll let you associate with folk who give you strength. Because right now, your company is draining you. Abraham moved from where he was to a place of strength. And when he got enough strength, he started associating. Some of you are too busy associating with people that have no faith. They're weak in the word, they're weak in their mind, they're weak in their walk. But they've been in church 20 years. I don't even understand that. Mom ring, because I do this because of you and Dr. Deborah, Dr. Mixon, Father Hope, because y'all like the deeper parts of the scripture. Uh, Deacon, Deacon Mays, you know, folk that I know personally, some of you just like, go there. Then some of you will text me like, I enjoyed you. I can't tell you look so dead. Stop texting me. Listen to me. Cause that's, because that's a person that's a little psychotic that you're excited, but can't nobody tell. you excited? Yes. Something wrong with that. I want some people in my life that I can associate with that's excited about where God's taking me and I'm excited about where God's taking you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And you can't get jealous of who gets there first. Sometimes God will take you all the way to the door of a blessing and then test your faith and say, let who's behind you walk in first. Let me tell a humorous story. When I was in the sixth grade, there was a young lady named Mary. Won't give her last name because she's still living. And I wanted to date her. I had what y'all call puppy love. Talk to me, grown-ups. I had puppy love, right? But on pizza day at the lunchroom, I, I'm... I'm going to be in the front of the line. And I wasn't saved. I wasn't a prophet. I was just a person with common sense. I said, this is your chance to get her attention. There's only one piece of pizza left. And it's only two of you. Would you rather eat the pizza one time or would you rather date her all year? I said, hello. She said, hello. I said, you can go ahead of me. No, I'm all right. I said, there's only one slice left. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Are you sure? I'm sure. What are you going to eat? Oh, I'm good. Once I did that, she ate that pizza. She said, hi, Todd. I said, good God. There we go. And some of y'all don't know how to let somebody else go ahead of you because sometimes God is testing whether you believe that even though you see no more pizza you gave away a slice for a pie all right I'm gonna come out of here you don't see the pie 
because it's not done yet. Some of you are about to walk into the season called it is done. You can't see the pizza when it's in the oven. And three or four, you still look mean. I'm like, what happened to you? My black sisters be getting fly hairdos and face be beat and look mean. I'll be like, wow. He's only your boyfriend. He's only your baby's daddy. He's not your husband because he got you pregnant. You rather have what faith has for you, not what fate has for you. They didn't catch that either, but we'll move on. So, Mamre is strength. Hebron is association. God is about to allow some of us after this month to be associated with people who do nothing but give you strength. Tell somebody and tell them, I need that right now. I need that. They that wait upon the Lord. Your altar is where your strength comes from. And you should show forth after you leave the altar you should get strength to then know who to give your strength to. Stop giving a part of you away to people that don't value any part of who you are. Faith, y'all quiet in the middle, but faith will change how you see things because faith will tell you, I made you wait three years for that? You're going to utilize me for something beneath you? You waited five years. And look at what you're thanking God for. Here's what the scriptures say. I'll preach it next Sunday, not this Sunday, for one millionaire in the future by faith. He says, according to your faith, not your anointing, not your tongue speaking, not your running, not your, no, according to your faith, be it unto you. Then the Bible, look, everybody has faith. Here go that middle again. And let me tell you what drains me, Dr. Barbara, are the people that are second guessing the word of God with their minds don't even know the Bible. Yes, everybody that's a Christian should have faith. But this is what the Bible says for three of you who folk are jealous of. Some of us have a greater measure. Faith has a measure. That's why I said even when you preach, do it according to the measure of your faith. Don't preach everything because you can't live it all. Preach the part that you can be the character in. They'll go to the middle again. Whoever God called preach is supposed to preach it all. That is not the Bible. You preach the part and you preach the part you preach right. Because he called you to preach don't mean you get to preach everything, especially while you're the character in the story. When I first got saved, my hand to God, we used to do trial sermons. See, you that didn't clap because you a self-made preacher. But let me come back. We had to do initial sermons. If you have not experienced that, shame on you. I heard God in a dream and since then I've been in ministry. That's illegal. That's not biblical. That is psychotic.
everyone in the Bible that went forth had to be approved. Everybody. Look how quiet it got on that. What was I just saying? I, I, I was saying that we had an initial sermon. And I got up and I preached because I had just got saved and filled. And when you first get saved and filled like the right way, you don't sin like for about three straight years. See how quiet y'all, you be holier than thou. Especially if you're raised up in the holiness church like me in the storefront. Anybody with red, you Jezebel. We condemned everything. You cut your hair, that's against the book of Corinthians. You got on pants as a woman, that's an abomination. Thou shalt not wear any articles that pertain to a man. We knew how to quote it, we didn't know how to di divide it. That's why you can't preach everything just because you can quote it. I preached on fleet fornication, be ye holy. My pastor after church said, little minister hall, come in here. I said, yes, sir, pastor. He said, now, nah, I know you're living holy. Don't take this wrong. He said, you preach the word of God, but you didn't preach God's word. I said, I said, pastor, it's in the Bible. He said, yeah, but you ain't in that scripture. He said, now, son, preach what you can live. He said, because every sermon you preach, God gives the devil permission to test you in that area. He said, so shut up where you can't grow up. All right, I'm going to leave all this alone. See, it's a measure. you got to know, can I measure up to this sermon? Because faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But how can they hear? Oh, y'all let like, without a preacher. And how can he or she preach except God send them? Look at somebody, we in Bible study, tell them there's a protocol to all of this. Let me read my two paragraphs and give Dr. Tracy something healthy after this. Some people, y'all heard this Sunday morning, that are part, that are at a point of frustration and feel like giving up and doing what is most common or most comfortable, don't even know that what's uncomfortable is that they're on a journey of faith. Faith is simply, y'all better stay with me, a walk in the dark. And, uh, y'all don't hear me, in darkness, it's hard to comprehend anything. Middle section still ain't talking, huh? On a faith journey, the word why shows up so many times. Why me, Lord? Why? Why? Why did I quit my job? Why did I buy that car? Why did I even date him? Why did I get married? When things start failing on your faith journey, why? 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 Y'all can be quiet all you want to. Why? A-E-I-O-U and sometimes why? 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 And even in the midst of those whys, the emotions or feelings uh, that say give up surface as well. So if I can't get my answers to why, the only way out for me is to give up. If y'all talk to me, then I'll talk to you. Some of you are experts at giving up. Which means you're also failed at getting answers. I need a break from church. Who needs a break from church? You need a break from breathing. Who needs a break from doing what God created you to do? Who has the nerve or the unmitigated goal to tell God I'm dissatisfied with my journey? Uh-oh. Somebody crazy. 
crazy in the brain, crazy insane, you can't figure out why. No, I don't know that word. I don't know that word. I know it's deranged. I don't want to say all the words. <laughs> Giving up is not an option for people of faith. Talk to me online. Talk to me online because these people ain't talking. Giving up is verbiage for the weakest saint in the church. And right now, you know you're weak because you're getting offended. If the church bothers you enough where you need a break from the church, why don't you just take a break from your marriage? Don't use your 20, 21 days on the job. Take a break while you're angry. Just say, I ain't coming in. somebody at your job and be like, I don't like you, so I'm just going to stay home because I don't want to hurt you. Just take a break from school while you're in the semester. You know what? I'm not going for a week. Don't show up during finals. No, just take a break from court. I don't like the judge. Most of these things, legalistically, talk to me, will put you in contempt. Sometimes I don't love what I do. I have to grow into it. But then somebody asks me, well, then why do you do it? And then the others say, why do you do it so well? And I'm going to answer it for three folk who will jump up and down because I love who asked me to do it. And if a man's ways please God, oh, y'all, he'll make his enemies, the things that are stressing you out, be at peace with you. Y'all don't know this. I'll say this for Sister Posh, who is a CEO. I'll say for anyone else who owns a business whose name doesn't just jump in my head. But 10 of you catch this. Some of you got to love these enemies because they're your future employees. I know you don't believe it. I will never hire them. You have to. The Bible said I'll make your enemies your footstool. And the footstool is not to crush. It's, to, it's a little apparatus to reach what you can't. Oh, yeah. It's more of an assistance. All right, let me move into the next level for three folk who push me. Prophetically and literally, what did I just say? I'm going to say it till y'all catch Bible study spirit. Prophetically and literally. Some of us, here we go, are moving to a place where we've never been before. We also, by getting to that place, have to navigate in a space that we don't understand. I'm going to say it one more time. That went way above your head. Some of us are going to a place where we've never been, but to get to the place, you have to understand the space. I thought you would respond much differently because I gave you mental aptitude. I made it higher than I gave you credit for. But let me say it again. I'm trying to get to the place where God wants me to be. You can't because you can't handle the space where you are. I said, I'm not going to speak in tongues, I almost did. I said, ooh, prophetically and literally. Here, go to the middle again. How can you stop the Spirit from speaking in tongues? Because it said, as the Spirit gave utterance. 
more better to hold it in than to speak it without an understanding. I want to speak in tongues because the scripture is making me happy, but I got to give it to you. So I have to hold mine till I get in my truck. Prophetically and literally, some of us are moving to a place where we've never been before, but we also have to navigate in a space where we don't understand. Let me give some understanding. To reach that place in life where you will succeed, you must navigate in a space that you have never occupied before. Now, when we read those scriptures, you didn't do what I told you. I said, underscore, place. And when Abram got to that place, this is for Dr. Tracy. This is for Sister Smith. All of those that have great jobs, maybe managers, travel, get good perks. That means you went through major interviews and served your job well enough for them to let you represent them. Space. Somebody say space. space. I looked up what is the difference in space and place. <laughs> Believe it or not, for one young person will jump, we are all in space, but the planet is the place. See how slow? Yeah, if you go to the moon, all right, let me get out of here. Then you have reached a place in space. But what's crazy for three folk who won't scream, you can't live in space. But you have to navigate through space to get from one place to the next place. And if you disconnect from your source, you will float through space. I don't know if a young person jumped, but they'd have got a miracle. But this is what it says. The place. The place is promising while the space is extremely uncomfortable. So to get to a promise, I must navigate through uncomfortability. Unfamiliar territory. There's a distinct difference in a space and the place. Let me give it like this and see if a woman would jump who's made a mistake, but you know God's about to bless you. When a woman finds a man and there's chemistry, she likes him, he likes her, and later on it don't work, you can't get hurt. He was just, he was just occupying space. He was never filling a place. Now, I could have flipped that and made it on y'all, but I'm being nice. But some of y'all keep treating space like place. Different in space and place. Now, this is for collegiate thinkers. Here is the difference in space and place. The first three things I'm going to talk about all refer to space. Please hear me because I'm going to try to make it simple. This is called an abstract concept. What kind of concept? Not affleck, not the insurance. Abstract. <laughs> this is called an abstract concept. Space 
refers to a more abstract notion of physical extension or location. They didn't catch that. Which means space is measured in three dimensions. Length, width, and height. And when God told Abraham, I'm about to bless you, he said, look at the breadth. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And the length. Oh, y'all. He said, and everything you see, I shall give it. All right. See, Bishop getting too deep. It ain't deep. You don't want to learn. You want everything to come by a mysterious intervention. And faith is not mysterious. Faith demands work. And to prove it, for one person who will yell loud, six days did the Lord work. And if your creator can work, and you and I are created in his image, then laziness is of the devil. Now let me come back. What kind of concept? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Space refers to more abstract notion of physical extension or location, which means it is governed and measured by three dimensions, length, with height. This is a part of physics, which means space is where you stand, where nothing is, and God says, I'll give you as far as you can see. Space interviews you for place. And then he told them, look northward, yelling. Look eastward, westward, southward. He said, and as far as your eyes can see, y'all are going to miss this now. That whatever I build in this space will be secure enough, not just for you, but for your children. Forever. And then what made him know God was not lying, his move of faith was he built an altar there. Bow. And once you put God out there, you have marked your territory. I know I'm boring you. I know. Universal concept. What concept? This is what it says. Space exists everywhere. Regardless of human presence or perception, space is everywhere. Hold on, you're not happy. An empty room or a vast desert landscape are both considered spaces. In order for you to get to place, you must navigate through what? And now I just told you in an intelligent way and you didn't scream, when you are in space, you are around empty. So anybody right now that's losing a lot, it's because space is interviewing you for place. Because what you have now does not fit where God is taking you. Your apartment furniture does not match your house. The color scheme doesn't work. The type of furniture, whether it be the Victorian or whether it be whatever, it doesn't match. It's a contemporary house. But some of y'all are satisfied getting approval on a new house with furniture that don't match the scheme.
any of you that feel like you're losing a lot, you're in a place of space. Let me give it to you deeper because I thought y'all would be excited for three focal screen with me. When you know you have what it takes to get whatever you want, you make room or space. Oh, yo. You get upset. I got four cars. This is only a two car garage. We should have got a, a house with four. You've got to think about your space before you say amen to the place. You got 12 kids, a two bedroom don't work. Never give birth to what you don't have room for. Faith is like a pregnant person. It gets in you. The more you feed it, it expands you. You don't have to tell nobody you're pregnant. They say, are you pregnant? Because they see your expansion. Then you go through mood swings. Y'all real quiet. Then the cologne you used to like make you throw up. You don't know what's going on. You ain't never been in this space before. I ain't never been pregnant. If I'd have known I was have to go through this, I'd have never got pregnant. Y'all ain't talking to me. But then you love the child after you didn't enjoy the experience. They don't get it. Neutral concept. What kind of concept? I'm not going to put y'all in a class like that. We have abstract, we have universal, and now we have neutral. Neutral space says space itself has no inherent meaning or character. Space means nothing. Space holds you like it holds stars. Space works along with gravity. Y'all, space has to abide by laws. Be it physics, y'all ain't talking to me. Space, oh y'all, boy, y'all don't has to. That's what it does. But there's a theory in physics, and it's called the quantum leap. So when folks start talking about leap of faith, right? Oh, y'all quiet. Just jump. No, no. Ain't no just some of y'all. Man, I love so-and-so's book, and I'm about to take the biggest leap of my life. No, 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 no. See, no, 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 no. Prophet, you can't get hurt. It's only water. No, you can die if you hit water wrong. You can break your neck. It's not about the leap, it's about the land. But let me help some of y'all. Some of y'all want to... Oh, I wish I had talkers. Because some of y'all hype yourself, but you never help yourself. What I'm trying to get you to do is understand faith is not magical. It's for disciplined Christians. Hold on. Space has no meaning. This is why it is extremely challenging, I've got one paragraph left, to navigate through a space that seemingly has no meaning. That means any of you who want to know whether you're close to what God promised you, you are experiencing feelings that be like, I don't even know why I'm here. What am I doing? I feel like I'm doing worse than I did when I started. See, these are feelings that occupy space. We cannot go from NASA and Coco get in a spacecraft and get to the moon or Mars without utilizing space. And if one person jumped, because you think I'm off track, but I'm about to bless you, but 30 folk better scream on this. And as that rocket goes up, it must lose a lot, right? It, it nearly... Hold on, I'm almost back.
it has to let go of weight a certain a certain portion of mass they won't tell us everything but I have a friend who works at NASA and I can't say much because of the rules but let me say this for two women who were screaming, one man. We've had several aircraft go up and explode. The reason why it exploded is the parts that should have fell off didn't. And some of y'all are about to explode. Because what you should let drop off, you're trying to hold on to. They are good for your human companionship, but not for your journey of faith. I hear y'all pushing me. It's going to get heavy right here. Faith is found in space. Will you tell someone that who's fully alert? And Faith is found in space. And if you make it through space, you will find out that what was empty is about to be filled with promise. What you don't see about the word promise is if you don't have faith for it and you try to do it on your own and then give God credit for something he didn't tell you but something you did in your head and, and in a normal place it would work but in God's trying of your faith it won't. The only way it works with God is you got to do it like he told you. And even though you're intelligent God will make you look stupid if you try to do it out of his way. So by the time you do space wrong, you won't get what's promised because you come promised or compromised. Now the issue is, a lot of you compromise, be like, why would God stop me when he already knows what I need? No, God is the need. Oh, everybody just missed that too. The reason why he's not helping you is you're telling him what you need instead of needing who you're talking to. My faith looks up to thee. All right, layered, the three layers of place. You got space, you didn't like it. Let's get place and see if my son talked to me. This is called a layered concept. What did I call it? Don't worry, you don't get no F's or A's and you can't drop out of school here because this is free. But boy, I wish this was a paid for class so I could grade some of y'all tonight. Lay a concept for place. A place, watch now, builds upon the idea of space. You already missed it. By adding layers of meaning by the human experience and perception. So space says to the person that has faith, what would you do with all this space? Then it says mentally draw it first. Oh, y'all, perceive it because it is uh, 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 the hope, the things hoped for. Oh, come on. You don't see it on the outside, but can you perceive have you ever said, if I get a million dollars, first thing I'm going to do? The mere fact that you already know what you're doing, meaning you know what to do with space. The next layer, I'm almost there, is unique and subjective. Unique and subjective. Places are often unique. Or places are often unique and can evoke emotions or memories. Hear me. The character of place can be shaped by its history, cultural significance, or the activities that take place there. So if you're in an open field and you get a ball and you start kicking it on the ground, there someone made soccer.
Notice the space of every uh, sport is not decorated the same. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. Basketball is not played on the football field. Football field needs more space. And they need a place where they can create the space. So when you get a business, restaurant, I can't, or anybody, they ask you, what are you going to do with the space? Y'all might as well go home now. They first ask, what is the square footage? How many people are going to be coming in and out of here? Uh, how many exits? We went through that right here. You can have the place all you want to, but you first need the vision of what you're going to do, how you utilize the space. I got help with this visitor. Human-centered concept. A place requires some level of human perception or interaction to even be considered a place. For instance, I'm almost there. A scenic mountain range is considered a space until it becomes a place when it becomes a place when the mountain that's in a space experiences a hiker. What's that? Forget it. It's not a place until someone steps into it and utilizes it and interacts with it. Y'all don't hear me. The hiker sees the mountain as a challenge to go up. Where's your challenges taking you? Now, I don't want nobody to take this personal because I'm not looking at all of you, but people that are quiet and looking off and gazing, it's because inwardly you feel like a failure. See, I went to school. Because when people see how many mistakes they made, they tend not to look up. They tend to go into a slow drag head movement. Because they don't see it as God about to give them another opportunity. They see it as how often they messed up. But they don't see that God is basically saying, if I'm talking about it, I'm about to give you a new, a new chance and a new opportunity, but I can't let you do it the way you did it before. That's going to bless me. The hiker makes the mountain now a place because the hiker sees the mountain as something beautiful. Let me make it easier. Let me make it easier. On this note, after this, we go to the closing of our scripture. But on this note, the 10 people that jump, you actually have it. And when you don't jump, I get a little frustrated and not angry because I know what some of you need and, that, and then I get to know why you don't have it. So it's hard to encourage you when you are your own problem. It's difficult to even want to talk to you again because you're your own adversary. Here is the difference in space and place. On this note, Renna, stomp your foot. Izzy, get happy, and that's this. Imagine a, 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 a blank canvas, a blank canvas. Just something big, nothing on it. Clear, clean, all white canvas. To some of you, it's nothing till a painter looks at it. And what the painter uh, paints is first in his mind. But if he's a great painter, what he draws on blank goes on sale. Oh, yeah. Everything leads to success. But it starts blank. Hold on. I 
I have an idea, Bishop. Tell me what you think about it. I can't really, even though I will encourage you and say, thus saith the Lord, and try to help you try to wean it down and trim off the fat. But two folks scream on this. You don't have an idea from God. Because once you get an idea from God, you don't have an idea. The idea has you. Now let me come back here. Human said, you can't quit because it's from God. It ain't going nowhere. It'll be with you when you go to bed, be with you when you wake up. You talking to folk and you start talking about your idea. They be like, can you talk about anything else? Not right now, I can't. I eat, drink, and sleep, God, and success. And in that order. If ye meditate, Joshua 1 and 8, on his word, or the word he put in you day and night. Y'all quoting it, but you ain't living it. Ye shall have good success. Then he upgraded and said, everywhere the soles of your feet shall trod. Oh, y'all, that's space. And everything your hands should touch, I'll let you have it. He said, why would I put you around it if I'm not making you an offer to have it? Why would I keep throwing a certain thing in your face over and over? God is not a teaser. He's a pleaser. Will you tell somebody that? Job said, for the Lord giveth, Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job said, not Job 1 and 21, nor charged he God foolishly. This is for adults now. I'm talking about even children that have an adult mind. You got to scream on this. You should be glad that you had something to lose. Even if you lost your house, you can say I lived in the mansion for two years. You got to get excited about the time you had. They don't believe it. Once you have that same attitude of gratitude, you end up like Job. You get double. But some of you ain't going to never get it back because you tried to hold on to a lot more than God's word. I'm almost there. I might as well say this for two people who will encourage me. Jacob only got blessed because he let everything go, but he didn't let God go. Y'all read that? And God asked him, let me go. He had his hands full of God. And when you hold God right, pain is a part of it. Oh, yeah. And God pulled the hollow of his thigh, and he still held on. Then he finally said, what's your name? He said, you'll have favor with God and man. Favor's after the fight, but I'll leave that alone too. Some of y'all up in here, Lord, if you bless me, I'll praise you. God said, I don't make deals. God said, hold on, I'm God. I don't make deals. I give orders. You follow them. And then I return with something worth your struggle. I don't make deals. Now paint the picture on that canvas. The picture with its colors, shapes, and meanings now becomes a place. I'm about to bring it in because y'all didn't like it. In the text, we see God takes uh, Abram to a place by faith. But he tells Abraham, if you want to get to the next place, or you can stay in the place you are, and that is just keep a lot. Or you, or you can lose a lot. Oh, I'm about, and I'll show you another level of something you've never seen before. We're closing here, and y'all missing it. He said, you can either hold on to what I gave you. Or you can let it go. Let me do this for two older saints who were screaming. They probably won't. You ever seen the game, let's make a deal? Pick a curtain. 
But they ask you, are you willing to lose what you have for what's behind curtain number one, two, and three? The Bible says Abraham and Lot began to prosper. And that Lot only prospered because he was connected to Abraham. Y'all see y'all? And everything Abraham had spilled over into Lot. The problem then aroused because Lot's servants began to tell Abraham's servants, my master has more than yours. All right. So then Abraham goes to Lot and says, so that we don't have any beef, we need to separate because what we have is competing. Oh, yeah. And most of the time, the one that God is with is the one that walks away from everything. Yep, that's the Bible. And you that didn't get excited, that's why. Because you are focused on a lot more than a Lord. Watch, with eight minutes left for me. <sighs> he told Abraham, did y'all see it? Did y'all read it or did I read it by myself? He said right here in verse 14 of chapter 13 of Genesis, the Lord said to Abram, after that lot was separated from him. He said, do not look forward to another thing until I separate you from a lot. He said, and give your nephew the first shot at which part of the land he wants. Y'all right. didn't like this. He basically told Abraham, let him go first. Y'all missed my whole story. I'm trying not to clap because that's when I get happy. Let him go first. Then he turns around and he says, and Lot chose the well-watered land. Green grass, palm trees. Oh, y'all miss it. He loved the space. But what Abraham looked at was desert and dirt and no fruit. And God told Abram, uh, I'm going to let him go. But wherever you go, I'm going with you. Yeah. And some of y'all don't understand. I don't care how empty your life is. He's with you. Now, once you value his presence over his presence. When Lot, and we ain't teaching on this, gets to Sodom, it's filled with problems. I told someone yesterday for a screamer over here, everything totally beautiful got some ugly hiding out in it. If you go to a used car lot, they'll shine that car up, clean the engine, because they know you're looking at it. By the time you pull it off, no guarantees, no warranty, break down in the week because they covered it with aesthetics. You go to an apartment, they paint the ceiling so you don't see the water spots. They paint everything to make sure, look at this, you kept it real clean. You go live in there, flush the toilet, everything fall over, roof start leaking after the rain, you want to complain. Then you say, we should have waited. He's a sweet man. He loves you. He married you. Wonderful wife. He'll even do your hair. He'll run your bath water. Gets up. Takes care of your children. Then you find out he don't actually like you. He's like 
fuck you. And then you come up with, I should have waited. Faith tells you, don't accept anything for face value. Cancel your sight. Now, one more scripture, Dr. Mixon. Then I'm going to close with this lot and blow my own mind. One more scripture. I've heard it. I don't, well, if they can find it, I'll let them find it. But y'all said, how can the blind lead the blind? They both fall into a ditch. If y'all find that, go ahead. Because uh, how many ever heard that scripture? Come on, don't, don't be playing, raise your hand. It said, how can the blind lead the blind? First of all, it don't say that. And never did. Let them alone. There's a group of people you're not to deal with. They be blind leaders of blind people. And if the blind leader lead the blind follower, all the whole group of blind folk going to do is fall into a ditch. It's not a question. It's a, it's, it's a statement. There is no how can the blind lead. It's no. Look at somebody. Well, maybe it's in another scripture. We'll find the other one. I got some masterful technicians. Find another ditch scripture. There you go. There you go. This one's a parable. Spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Question. Shall they both fall into a ditch? Not they will. Question. What's the next verse? Do we have any answer? Where's the next verse? Says the only way that can happen is everyone that is perfect shall be as who they follow. Everyone that is mature is mature because of who they follow. And if you follow leadership blind to scripture, oh, y'all don't hear me, your life never ends up where the scripture wants to take it. I said I want to tell the story and close with Lot. They didn't like this. This was too late for them to find out how to make it before June gets out. Why would God make us start this series right in the month that he promises to start allowing us to possess things if he's not giving you a walkthrough. Why would God allow this to happen and even touch or lead certain people to leave for a minute so that whatever can stop us does not stop us so that we can all get there by losing what they think is a lot. Look how quiet it is now. Lasante, thank y'all for being here tonight. I went, Brother Charles, I went, brothers and sons, I went to D.C. over 15 years ago. I can never forget the story. I went down to Chinatown so I could eat. I am a Chinese food connoisseur, forgive me. I know y'all say that's cat and dog. Give me some gravy, soy sauce, duck sauce, some Thai chili. If you can eat chitterlings, I can eat me some duck. Now, let me stop. Chitterlings. Chitterlings. Y'all try to make it sound exotic. Chitterlings, please. With some hot sauce and a piece of bread.
or put it on a bed of white rice. <laughs> now, you know why you're excited? Your faith can actually see it and taste it. And those who don't like it, your nose can smell it. See, you all have a perception about what I'm talking about. But when I talk about God, I don't see faces. I don't see movement. Oh, taste and see? I don't see that you have an enthusiasm about the one that does anything. And everything. I went there, uh, brother, brother Waldron, because that's my guy, and I stepped out of the car with about four bishops, and I know this place very well, so they were going to stay open for us past the hours because we tip well, and I've been going there since I went to Howard. And they said, hey, Reverend, you're coming? And I saw two blind people, real blind people, walking down the street, holding hands at 2 in the morning. Well, for some of y'all, it may not move you, but that was like a little romantic inquisitive, right? It's 2 a.m. It's downtown D.C. It's dangerous. It's Chinatown. That's double jeopardy. And y'all blind. That's third jeopardy. Y'all, see, y'all, you don't have no CNI dog. You ain't got no gun. And they holding hands. So, Lady Jackson, I'm, I'm, I'm inquisitive because I'm a thinker. It's three-way streets. They're flying. I watch them, and the man says, we see you. Then he says to me for screamers, when we say see, that means we hear you. I took a slow step. He said, I see you. I said, sir, I'm not. He says, I know you're no threat because we can feel fear too. Oh, yeah. I called one of my bishop buddies. I said, man, come up here. Two blind people. And I quoted the scripture wrong. How can the blind lead the blind? I need to see this. They're getting close to D, I think it's D Street. And I decide I'm going to help them cross the street. Because the cars are flying. They said, we don't need no help. Now I'm making faces behind them now. See, y'all don't know. Because that's what folk do that hate your faith. Oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'm. Cause you think they can't make it without you right now, but this is a test, not for them, but for you. Cause what you need eyes for, they don't. They was holding hands, I'm looking at the light. I want to see how they're going to do this. Light turns red, they walk across. I then start saying like haters for three people, one of them can see. You see how quiet it got? Okay, so you just went and got a car with no money. You know, people don't believe faith works, right? Like, I mean, they really don't believe it. His story's just, he got a story for everything. I got a trial for everything, too. I've lost a lot. Oh, yeah. They crossed that street. Edmondson, they crossed that street. I didn't care if they could see me no more. I ran across the street. I almost got hit, and I got eyes. 
One man cussed me out, rolled the window down. I didn't care. I was more curious about talking to the blind than being hit by what I could see. Because I wanted to know how can you do what I do and not have to look around. Got across, he says, hello. I said, hello. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but I do. And he says, no, we are totally blind. He said, I know you have questions. He said, because this ain't the first time we've gone through this. He said, we take this journey all the time. And people ask us, same question you're about to ask. And that is, how did you know when the light turned green? I said, go ahead, man, prophesy. How did you know when the light turned green and all them cars? He said, number one, and I hope to see somebody go crazy. He said, we live wherever they live, and it's filled with a bunch of handicaps like them. So the city created a device on the traffic light that when it starts sounding like birds, because I thought they were real birds. I was like, what birds fly at night? Oh, y'all. I was like, what are birds doing out at 2 in the morning? They sound just like birds. The bird sound means the light is in their favor. And it's loud enough for those driving to hear it. So the system was created for the blind. And when you become a Christian, the system is created for the blind. You don't cross the street looking at what's going to hit you. What is not supposed to hit you must pay attention to your crossing. Now I'm going to show you how faith works, then we'll get this next Wednesday. Ten of you look at me and act like I didn't waste all of this teaching. I came through South Apopka years ago. Going somewhere, leaving Pastor Zachary Timms. I was on Claire Kona o Okoe, whatever that street is. And I turned and made a right. And I tried to go to another street to get back to where I left. And I turned on 13th Street near the bodega. And I should have just made a U-turn, but the street is so narrow. Y'all been there that I went to the next available street to just go around, and the next street was Highland Avenue. I got to Highland, came all the way down. It was a dead end. Looked to the right. There was no street to go back out to things, so I was in the maze. When I stopped, the Lord said, that's your church. I said, oh, no, it ain't. Why? Number one, it wasn't my swag. It wasn't my character. It wasn't what I suffered for. We should be on the main street, in the main city. We was in no man's land. He said, now you're like Abram. What do you see? I said, I see a beat up, abandoned building in a hood rat city. The Lord said, I see a wonderful church surrounded by mansions and a Walmart. And I said, well, you see further than me. He said, now either you buy it or I'm going to create situations to take my money back. I said, see? And what blows my mind for the members that ain't screaming is every service we've had, a visitor shows up. How? How? For the first two years, we weren't even on Google Maps. After we bought the church, we got lost coming to our own church. We didn't come through the gate. You had to walk over it. Bullet holes in the glass and the doors. Rats. No hallways. See, y'all quiet now. 
hundreds of thousands of dollars of my retirement money yeah. to where I lost a lot. Yeah. No, no, I don't, you know, applauding me is good, but I really want you to believe the story. Because that money was my retirement money. Then the Lord gave us blueprints that we drew ourselves. Ain't none of us been to school for no architectural nothing. We don't know how it happened. Y'all not here in faith. Dr. Mixon drew it and they approved it. We said, what in the world did she draw? God gave her the skill to draw a legitimate blueprint that made the commission in them sign it. No company built this church. The church built this church. No company. We only had one general contractor. Timothy was building everything wrong. Now he walk around like he know everything. He learned everything from starting out wrong. So he should treat folk that do it wrong like they right. Because you know what it is to be wrong yourself. And the man that let him cut everything let him build it wrong. And had patience with him to teach it to tell him the reason why you're wrong right. I never heard that for Temple of Screen. Is you cut it left handed. You cut it according to what you're most comfortable with. Now you need to cut it the right way. They did the flaws. The flaws were even. And they thought it was right. And then the general contractor said, we got to do it all over. They said the flaws even. This is from Folk One Scream. He said, when you do it right, flaws are not even. They're leveled. See? Some of you are hearing me give you terms and some of you are just not on the level. You want to be treated even. So folk are upset because they're not treated even. But this whole church that you're standing on not leaning, the whole floor is level. It is leaning. Because if it rains, things got to flow somewhere. The roof is level, but if you walk on it, you're walking even. There has to have a pitch for things that multiply or gather too heavily to flow in a certain direction. And some of y'all are losing things during this season because God said you're level. And I got to make room for what's coming because if not, you're not going to be legit. What makes you legit is not what you have, it's the story you tell. I bought this place, Brother Curry, with my own money. Not one chicken dinner, not one apple pie, not one Skittle. And I preferred that we did it like that and got a little thermo ther thermometer picture and put 3,000 and color it in red. I, I wanted us to do it like everybody else did it. Don't take all my money. Let's paint this right here in red. And after we built it, few people came. We having church. COVID hit. We still having church. Nobody knew where we were at. Took in the members during COVID. And after we started growing healthy, we started then taking in the gifted. And the gifted began to suffocate the healthiness of what was growing. You got to hear me. I thought at least a hundred times in one month, this is not God. I said in one month. People saw me crying on Sunday. Ooh, the spirit is on you. Ain't no spirit on me, huh? I'm crying. See, y'all don't want the truth. I'm crying. But I'm not going to tell nobody I'm sad. Because I represent God. 
My heart is hurt. My phone rings. It's Pastor Rod Parsley. I ain't never met Rod Parsley. He ain't never called me until after I said yes, Lord, to this. Brother Hall, I want you to come preach for me on Super Bowl Sunday, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, for those who ain't jealous, he gave me back a third of my money. Hold on. In one day. The next week, another big wheel preacher called. Who I had never preached for. The next week, full gospel call when they had their convention here in Orlando said, will you be the preacher? And flew me into my own town. Huh? In less than a year, I had all my money back. It took me 20 years to save it. And a year, let me get out of here. I saw it as I gave God 20 years of my earning and he showed me. You don't know who I am. I wanted a Bentley. I didn't want to buy one. I didn't want to splurge. I don't need nothing new. But I've been preaching 40 years. I had deserved for me, I want your pastor, a Bentley, right? A man calls me. I'm just incre increasing your faith now. A man calls me, Tony, and he says to me, hey, man, can you take my place and go preach in, I can't remember the town, but somewhere down in Florida. It'll come back. I don't want to lie, but somewhere down there. Where? Melbourne Coco, no, it's close to there, but I'll know it as soon as you say it. But they had me go down to some place. He said, I have to teach a Bible study. He said, I know you can do it. I said, all right, man. He said, they're going to give you five grand. I said, oh, boy, I'm on my way. See, y'all jealous. You see that? And I said, where is it? He told me I drove my white BMW 740IL. I drove it. And I was just going to teach Bible study. I didn't know I was teaching Bible study to 10 millionaires, right? I, they white. I got to think real quick. And they want me to teach about Jesus, a businessman, not a savior. But he didn't give me all that. He just thought I was that good. So I took 10 minutes, got in my car, prayed, got the sermon, finished the sermon. They're shaking my hand. Ooh, you was great. I said, Phew, thank you, sir. I get back in my BMW because it's Bible study that night. See? And I was just teaching a series that month on faith, family, and finances. You made the shirts. And I said God will do it before this week is over. I'm driving my clean BMW that I basically just got. Paying a note, I'm driving it. A car pulls on the side of me. Hey, pull over. He was white, so I said, okay. If he was black chilling, I don't know if I'd have pulled over that quick. And I've got two hours or less to make it back here to be on time. He said, hey, pull, pull, pull over. Can I talk to you? I ain't called nobody. I said, yes, sir. Man, I loved your teaching. I said, thank you very much. He said, no, I'm serious. He said, that was great, so you need to come back again. He says, uh, what year is your car? And I told him. He says, are you fully attached to it? I said, mm-hmm, yeah. He says, my wife, she was in the car, loves your car. And I looked at him. He was in a Bentley. I said, huh, she ought to like what y'all in. I said, but thanks for the compliment. He said, no, no, no. I'm not complimenting. She wants it. And I said, oh, okay, then go buy one. It's a 740. I'm trying to make it a Bible study. He says to me, if it's paid for, can we just make a call pullover? And he got out. He says, your car is way less than mine. Let's swap. I said, what? 
he said, give me that car so my wife can get off my back and you can take this fully paid for all the way back home and we'll finish everything. Well, I'm smart. I'm intelligent. I said, can I take it to the Bentley shop first and let them put it on the diagnostic? He said, sure. It says there's one right down here on Northwest 94th. It, it's almost coming to me. He said, go there. I pulled the black Bentley. Some of y'all jealous that I'm talking about a Bentley? I don't have it no more. Thank you. I, I pulled it in, and the service manager came. He said, sir, what is your name? I said, Todd Hall. He said, what are you doing driving that car? I said, I'm about to buy it, but I need a check. He said, we ain't got to check that because that's the owner's car. He owns Bentley. I said, what? They found two things wrong. I came back here. He called the owner of Bentley here and said, fix everything free. Make it brand new. Tell him it's paid for. I said, Lord, you good. He said, you said I'd do it by the end of the month. Now, I told y'all that this month God had some plans. And because you took it lightly, He does not need your help. He needs your belief. I drive nice cars, but those who study me know you only see me driving my Range Rover because I like it better than the Bentley. I'm not that kind of guy. I do it because when I teach folk, I want to be able to say I'm living proof that you can live here, you can do this. I don't sell my books, I've authored three. I've got over 2,000 tapes in a warehouse right here, right now, in Claremont. I don't sell product, I don't travel with product, I don't, I don't have an album, I've been asked to sing on people's projects every year. I don't do any of that. So my point is, how did I get where I am? Faith. So you can't argue with me. Well, you have yours. No, no. I had worse than you did. But I did what you couldn't. I stepped out. And I believed what he said to me. The hardest lesson for a Christian is to actually believe. I can't put this out, but read in between the lines. I was supposed to, I said read in between the lines, I was supposed to be the pastor of a certain church here. And I let them create a board from out of town to say this particular church does not need another single pastor because the actual pastor died. Read between the lines. I gave last words at the funeral. He died while in my company. I was offered a quarter of a million dollars just to tell how he died and never ever snitched because money is not that important. Everybody who knows know I ain't lying. And what nobody knows is the reason why I have not started building a church yet, but I may, is because that church still mine. Not the ministry, the building. Now, see how tough I am with my faith. You have not. I need y'all to grow up. You can't be that anointed and that humanly disappointing. Oil and vinegar don't mix. Either you are anointed with oil or you're spoiled like vinegar. Now be one or the other. I go to God in prayer for some of you almost three times a week. I mention the church as a whole several times a day. But some of you, I go to God and God keep telling me, stop bringing them to me. Said they do not trust me.
And when he says it to me, it pierces me. Because I'm like, how, Patty, you and I come from the same church. Can I say something without you killing me? Do you give me permission or you don't? I do. I want permission. Thank you. Because when I saw Patty here, I couldn't, first of all, I couldn't believe that she was saved. First of all. And when she saw I was Bishop Todd Hall, she's like, Todd who? Because we go back 50 years. But we come from under a certain oil that when Patty was talking to me at times about giving up and I'm done, I looked at her like she was retarded. I'm just done. I said, no, no, our parents didn't raise us like this. See, y'all don't want, I said, you, you're not going to be over my bishop cabinet talking about. And every now and then we all have hard times with our marriages. They were going through a space. But I bet she glad she stayed in her place. See what I'm saying? I bet she glad she's still Mrs. Kevin. New ring on her hand, bragging, taking pictures. But you were out of the picture because you were in a space that made no sense. Our parents didn't raise us like that. They said, hang on in there. Tell three people, let's get ready to go home. Tell them, hang on in there. My father, last story, look at me and look happy. No, know what? Look like you feel. My father had a need, a financial need. My father left me a text, because he know I don't talk much, unless it's urgent. He left me a text, Todd, I need thus, so, and so, and so. I never text him back. I called the bank. I said, I need y'all to have this ready tomorrow morning. And then I text his younger brother, who's my uncle. And I said, hey, man, I don't have dad's banking information. I'm going to send this to you. Y'all going to miss it. Will you deliver it to my dad? He said, sure, nephew. You know, the halls of cool. He said, man, I got it. I said, don't keep none of it now. <laughs> what, y'all don't have those kind of members? All right, see, y'all just leave me out there. My father texted me this morning. And I didn't answer, and I got upset because he says, now I'm just calling you to tell you I'm, I love you even though you didn't help me. What he didn't know was help was already there. No, no, some of y'all missing the story because some of y'all are still waiting on what's there. But God didn't like your next message. You see? You talked your way out of it. I didn't call him. Two hours later, my father calls. Long message. He's crying. Nah, 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 I ain't used to that. I want to tell you thank you for what you did. But what I heard more than thank you was I should have kept my mouth shut. See, young. Then the Lord told me, tell him he never has to pay it back. I was like, uh uh. See, y'all don't feel human. I said, you ain't never got to give it back. Called me two more times. I haven't spoken with him. I just text. And I said, God, what did you do? He said, I did two things at one time. I said, what's that? I'm going to see who screams over. He says, I put you in a place like Abraham where you could be a blessing. And then I proved to your daddy I'm still his God. Y'all didn't talk to me. He said, and this time 
He didn't have to go outside to get it. Right when I heard that, I said, okay. The more that story is I left preaching from, uh, what's that town that I just left? Florence, South Carolina, Marion, Florence. And they gave me my honorarium. Elder Charles, they gave me my honorarium. Very pleased. I'm happy. I'm not greedy. Thank you. Reimburse my ticket. They forgot. They'll send it on Monday. They text me. He said, Prophet Hall, I'm talking to the bishop. He said, man, you did so good. He says, um, we have to send you your reimbursement for your ticket. I said, okay, doc, man, I trust you because I'm trying to build a relationship. They needed my wire. You can't be just sending my ticket money. Now, I'm not going to tell you because the more I tell you, then the more you want money. See, I'm trying to get you to want the master. Because I was already paid. But what he sent next made what he gave me look like a child. And I hit him. He said, can you come back next year? I said, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I'll see you on my birthday. He said, because you came on your birthday and poured out your heart and preached so much faith, he said, what I gave you, I heard it saying, this is an insult. I said, keep speaking to him, Lord. But I never asked for money. I preached at a ministry that said they would never have me. I'm preaching everyone's convocation in the next, within the next two months. Everybody's. Every bishop from here across the land, California called. I couldn't go because we had the let the prophet speak. I said, God, what are you doing? He said, I still owe you interest for that church. He said, I gave you your money back, but I'm like a bank. I got to pay with interest. I, I said, he said, because he that lendeth to the poor, lendeth to the Lord. He said, Todd, I'm not finished blessing you. He said, you're not going to go out there like you used to. You're going to go out there one day and get a month full of pay. He said, I'm going to bless you in one day for the month. I'm like, well, let's go. And where he leads me, that's what you have to do. Now, I'm hard on y'all because you only have a few days to get back in line. Go home tonight. Repent, not from a place of hurt, but from a place of knowledge. Because when we know better, well, we should. Charles, I just had a birthday. Jonathan, I just had a birthday. I ain't did nothing yet. They gave me a little dinner, but I ain't did nothing. They wanted to do anything. Where you want to go? You want to go to Maldives? You want to go to Dubai? You want to go Puerto Rico? No, I want to go to church. Now, I didn't actually want to want to go, but I had to give God his option first because it is only another day. Gave it to God. And I'm still waiting on him to tell me, listen to me, and then scream for me, what I can buy for myself. The last time he let me buy something, it was a brand new Arnaj Bentley T when I was 45 years old. Second thing was a brand new house in Raleigh, North Carolina for half a million dollars. And I don't know how I did any of what I did. To this day, I'm not trying to figure it out. I don't care. And I was living only with white people. Weren't none of y'all in my area. 
because y'all done mess with my faith. How you get this? Hanshi, listen, I don't know how, I'm done, how I got anything that I have. No, no, don't, don't tell my story. I know it's God. I'm talking about none of it has a humanistic reasoning. He gave me my stuff while my credit was bad. Now it's good and I can get approved and don't know what I want. I don't want anything. I still crave White Castles every now and then. I'd be like, I need to drive all the way down to Daniel Carter to get me some murder burgers. See, y'all too bougie. You broke and got a preference. Once God sees that you are authentically humble, sincere and that you're not just doing better because you want him to give you more he will open up the windows of heaven y'all better believe me pour you out a blessing you will not have room one of my pastors you know him when he joined he said bishop I cannot afford to tithe I said you can't afford not to and now he has quite a bit. I almost told his business. He's a giving addict. Am I lying, Elder Frankie? Every three, six months, this boy got two new trucks. I said, what's wrong with you? You bought an electric BMW. Now you got an electric Hummer. Now you got an electric BMW. Now you got an electric Kia. Like, what's wrong with you? He said, the, he said listen, Pastor, he said, the oil is dripping. I said, but you keep starting over. He said, he said, I don't start over. He said, the same guy just says, keep bringing it back. And Reverend, I'll give you whatever you want. I said, that's favor. He said, that's flavor. Because sometimes you can live off the favor of a leader and just catch their flavor. Y'all standing on your thing. I will not be the only wealthy person in this church. That will make me a failure. I also want y'all to be healed. Physically and emotionally. Because some of you are wore out because you're trying to catch up on things. That's not the will of God. That is not the definition of being a man or being a woman. I'm not going to do whatever I have to. I'm going to do what the word of God asked me to do. And he said, come unto me, all ye that labor. Come on, and are heavy laden. What he promised? I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For my yoke is easy. And I'm going to keep preaching it until you believe it. We going faith until you ain't never heard faith like this in all your life. Because I can't wait to hear the testimonies that's about to pour in. Tell somebody and tell them uh, I'm going to get it by faith. And I told you two years ago. Faith is heaven's currency. It's the only thing that cashes. That's why he said, and he shall supply all my needs according to his riches, not on earth, not in the bank. Heaven has resources. You're holding the hand of a person who wants to see what's best for you. And if you hold their hand and it's flimsy, then politely give your hand a break. I pray for you often. One day I'm going to take you to eat. I'm going to share some stuff with you that you think I don't know. And we're going to talk about it. Because you got to be patient with what's coming. Every door that's open is not God. Sometimes Satan will open doors to throw you off of your space. And keep taking you places without you finishing spaces. 
got to finish your space. I'm Kojic. That's what I am. Like, y'all, I'm Baptist, and when I'm Baptist bread, and when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. You Baptist. We don't have fancy saying for Kojic except you cannot join and you got to be born in. And I was the renegade. Now, things may change, but as of now, how does your pastor and your bishop be invited to be the closing speaker of the holy convocation of the church? How does that happen? No, not no midnight service, the bishop's night. I'm going to preach for him now. But how do you do that? You wait. Why did that door come in my 60s? Because God said, your ladder. Yo. See, some of you, you got to read the book. And you have to stand on it. I don't know if it's going to happen. I know if I put an earring in, it's canceled. I bet that. See, you can't do you on God's time. We don't know everybody. How do I out of nowhere get a call from Dr. Jamal Bryant? He's got a whole lineup of prophets preaching right now. They're at their biggest prophetic meeting is at New Birth now. Cindy Trim and Prophet Lovey and uh, Brian Prophet Khan and uh, another prophet. I'm trying to remember. How do you bring me on a Sunday morning and fully don't know why you doing it? God's about to put your name in spaces to where folk who don't even know you want to get to know you. And once you get to that place, you better know what to say. Because seasons, there's no practice. Them curtains go up. That's it. Last but not least, I'm speaking debt-free before I speak money. No, no, I'm not speaking money. I'm going to ask God to invade your debt. What I want God to do, they think I'm playing. They better get to know me. I'm going to ask God. To allow his divine power to invade. Your debt. Supernaturally. Uh, Deacon Mays. I'm closing with this and then y'all will give. I have a brother, several of them sing. Patty's whole family sings, all of them. Like, can actually sing, sing. My brothers can sing. And uh, one of my brothers wanted to make it to the big league because my brothers Aaron and Damon was already there through the group guy. So my other brother, there was no room for him in the group. He's a late bloomer. And he got that opportunity like some of you are about to get. The Apollo called him and said... Come sing tonight. Oh, I rented a limousine. Because I said, my brother going to tear it up. And we're going to have a third star in the family. I'm not one of those. That's Aaron, Damien, and this brother whose name I won't mention right now. We all get there. My brothers are sitting in the balcony. The whole group guy with Teddy. And we told him, don't try to make it off of someone else's name. Y'all don't get it, I see. And he walked up there and said, I see my brothers in the balcony, Aaron and Damien. No, and the people went crazy. They clapped. But now you have put in the audience mind that you can sing like them. That's why I said, don't use a name that you ain't on the level of. I'm telling you now. And don't use my name after you don't obey what I preach. Man, y'all cut that out. Because one day, the person whose name you use, the person you gave it to, they're going to call us. I got up. The boy sang Keevan. 
and they booed him to death. See how y'all look? That's how we look when we see you saying you trust God, you save, you believe in miracles. That boy was singing. I was up. I'm, I'm, I'm way in the back, though. I don't like being seen. Yeah, but he know I'm there. I'm in the back, closest to the door in case he couldn't sing. I'm like, <laughs> see, y'all don't have no stories. I got my 120-foot stretch limousine that's out there that I rented. I'm waiting to, to, you know, we go to dinner. So, boo! We all get in the limousine. He ain't talking. He crying. Grown man. My brother said, we told you don't throw names. I looked at him. I said, that is not the reason why you got booed. Todd, you shut up. I said, all right. You in my limousine, boy. I'm going to let you have this day because I know you're feeling certain. We get ready to eat. I said, can I talk now? He said, yeah. And what I told him is what I'm about to tell 10 of you after you hear it. I said, you would have won the night. You can sing. Man, get to it. I said, you never walk in and don't touch the rock. They booed him because he did not contact. And some of y'all come to church and don't touch the rock. And I'm telling you, the reason why life is booing you is you're relying on your abilities Without touching, you cannot do that at the Apollo. Steve Harvey saved some people. He said, you better go on back there and touch that rock. That's what I'm telling some of you. You got a few days to rub that rock. He could have made it. My brother Aaron made it with God by singing at the Apollo. Then the whole group made it by being in the mall singing a cappella. Then my brother put on a Stevie Wonder beaded uh, braid wig back in the day and started singing like him and played the piano. And that was all she wrote. You are one or two events away from being interviewed by faith. You don't get ready. I don't hear. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. I had a guy the other day, we was hanging out, and he called every famous person's name he called. I picked up the phone and texted him, and I made them talk to him. He said, who don't you know? I said, those who I ain't supposed to. <laughs> Berlin went to play for Tweed and Case in them, and they FaceTiming me with Berlin, talking about tell him to call me. You don't have to go nowhere for your name to go. What you got to do is lift up a name where you are. And if that name is real to you, God will do what he did for Abraham. I shall spread you as far as your eyes can see. Talk to the neighbor just for 20 to 30 seconds. Tell him something good. Tell him you'll never be broke again after June. Tell them your tears are about to become joy. God's going to bottle up your tears of sorrow. Say something positive to them. Minister into their lives. You'll be able to quit your job by next year. You got to speak something. I see God saying no surgery. God's going to create a cure for what else you speak. And if the person's life that you're speaking into does not get excited, something's wrong with them. Yeah. 
Hey, Hanchi, let me ask you one thing. Uh-oh, ha hallelujah. Uh-oh, Steve felt that one. Steve go out on the road, tell me who he's with. I tell him, tell them I said hi. Posh want to go hear Fantasia. I tried to call her so that Posh can meet her in the back. None of that moves me because it has nothing to do with my journey. But sometimes God will take you through something to help others get to something. You disconnect from that rock. You hold a lot too long. You make what he gives you feel like it becomes him. You'll be stripped as fast as you ever got it. Which res restaurant do you help? I know nothing about it. Where is it? And who owns it? Uh, Pastor Francella Pastor? Pastor? from Jamaica. Have you been at the one at the gas station? Every day. And which one's the second one? That's the gas station. Okay, let me let me stay in my space because I'm about to tell you something. I need you to be careful with your wordings. I need you to be careful with how you interact with people, even with the Bible. I need you to be extremely careful because sometimes we mean well but it can turn against us if we release words too soon but the Lord says to tell you if you desire and it has to be your desire God says give him another eight months of you serving and you will go from serving to owning Now, you that don't get happy for other people, one day you're going to learn. And what's crazy is God says he's not giving it to you for you to work in it. Because the one that's in the gas station is the one that's going to become a brick and mortar restaurant. You have big dreams. They have faith. But there are things you would do that they're not doing. And God says, tell him, hold on. Give me eight more months of serving in any capacity. And I'm going to blow him up. And somebody ought to shout yes. I got one more thing to tell you, and you may not love me on this because it's, it's a prop prophecy that God says he's been dealing in space with you before he created a place that there's a few more constellations, I don't know what that means, that he needs you to go through before you land on your planet. He said, tell him, I hear y'all, why does he keep saying us? It's a martial art thing, y'all learn it later. But the Lord said, when you run slowly, God said, tell him this. I will not give him a business and give him all of these connections if I don't have the wife holding up his hand. And what's crazy is she's in the picture. Are y'all jealous or are you happy?
Young lady with the green and pink blouse that wave, you came as a guest, wave at me. Did you invite that woman from the potter's house here? All right. Are you visiting for a little while? You're here working. I want to say to your friend who invited you here that the Lord said, tell you, at one junction, one point, one space in this service, your faith really leaped. You walked all the way to the front. You was waving your hands. God says, tell her, the storm I let her go through for the past eight years, it ends tonight at 12 midnight. And God says, give them 38 days, then go looking for your new place to live. And somebody with a loud mouth ought to shout yes. Chantel, 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 Chantel. Today, and you always blessing me, you and a few people always do, put a smile on my face if it's $5, 30 But today at one point you sent $30. Normally there is an inscription in the notes as to what you send money for. This time there was nothing. Right? And I looked, and I got ready to text you to be like, what's this for? And the Lord said, no. I just left it. I think I sent you some praying hands or something. And the Lord said, tell her when you see her. And I hope somebody don't get mad. Tell her she's got between two to two and a half years because she sold that $30 today out of nowhere. God says, tell her, I'm going to release a house for every dollar. <laughs> She, now hold on, she needs to hear this. You're about to be a broker. God says, you will buy properties, you will flip them, you will rent them. God said, and after the 14th flip, there's a wedding in your life. Yep. And I'm a little uptight because her and I, I'm like her dad and she's open with me and we played about something that God is making me laugh at because it keeps going back and forth. God said, if she's serious because she basically said, no, I'm good, but tell her when she marches around the church, if she's serious, tell you that the reason why he said on the 14th flip, unless you move quicker, you will know that you're getting married because it'll be the man buying the house. And he's white. All right, whole hands, time to go. He can flip it, but we're going to leave that alone. Young lady with the braids, you look like you got a gray something on. Yes, yeah, step out a minute. Yes. May I ask you your age? 23. Are you presently in college? Have you gone? Never stepped foot in one. How did you do in the 11th grade? No, not good at all. Go and tell me. All right. And who brought you to this church?
Michael, good, good, Mike. Huh? All right, good, good. What, that's the same, same one that I met? I wouldn't know because my mind is gone, dog. Oh, I'm not even here. I'm in space. <laughs> the Lord said to tell you, number one, I don't know why I see this, and it, it, it keeps coming and going. I see hospital stuff on you, like the scrubs, like, do you work now? What do you do? Oh, you work at Universal. If I told you that you're about to get a job that it would take a certificate and or a degree to get, would you believe me? Because you've been praying. You said, God, I didn't have people who would support me. I don't come from here. But God said, tell you, in about six months, you're going to be working that new job and somebody with a loud mouth and happy hands. And what's crazy, Mike, is God just told me the only reason why he let me prophesy to her is she told God in private, it's not that I need one, but Lord, you speaking to everybody else, let pastor talk to me. And she don't even know how this works. But just look at somebody and tell them God is good, just like that. Ma'am from... Texas, wave at me. You know, you were so kind. When we mentioned your name, you waved to everybody. You were so friendly. I'm sorry that my church was not as friendly back, but give them about another five years, and they're going to wave like you waved, right? But she just waved at everybody. Sunday, we had a lady that blew a kiss for everybody. Nobody blew no kisses back. I don't know what you do for a living. You don't have to tell me, but God says, tell her, I got her one promotion away from retirement. You one, pro uh oh, she read it. You one promotion. Is it the age that you have to wait on or is it the years? It's the years? So it's not the age. So you go with the age. All right. Now, Lord, what I want you to do, Lord. Because I can't make you older quick, but I can sure make this other part move pretty fast. I'm going to ask God to give you retirement, but retirement so that you can teach and own your own business. Because you told God, I want my own business. Am I right? All right, good. And I'm going to ask God to give you a bunch of ladies that's going to help you. Yeah, I know. A bunch of ladies. Well, just praise God for y'all because it's already done. My man in the white shirt in the back with the long braids, wave at me. I got to go now, but wave at me. Yeah, you. I think I prayed for you in the lobby. Did I prophesy to you in the lobby? It was a couple weeks ago. I need to ask you something. Since then, how are you doing? Great. You're doing so great that God says, tell him, because of the newfound love and release that he's gotten from the spirit of depression leaving him, tell him, go look for three homes. One is a four-bedroom, two or three. Tell him whichever one he chooses, I'm going to bless him to be able to move one more time. This time, God's going to pay it off fast, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And somebody ought to shout yes.
I want everybody to get a seed of faith, whatever amount you choose. I have no special amount for you to give, but to whom much is given, much is required. I would that some of you will actually be a blessing on nights like this, because these are the nights that I give my best teaching. And you can grow by this. Once you are satisfied with what you're about to give, you can bring it. But smile when you do, because we don't want sad seed. I don't believe in sad seed. The Bible said God blesses a cheerful giver. No sad seed. Touch somebody and tell them no sad seed. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, the Lord is here. I said, thank you, Jesus. Give Dr. Mixon a mic. She's about to come and give final words and send us home. Thank you, Jesus. What you want? What? Yeah. Say hello. Say it right here. Hello. Say it. Hello. See? Boy, this girl has grown. Come on and get her because I ain't having no more. Not ever, never, never, ever. I love other people's children. Let's clap for the baby. Y'all pray over it. Because one day we needed to keep growing. One day I want that basket filled to the top. Somebody say we're going to do that. On Sundays and Wednesdays, one day we're going to fill that basket to the top. Be it digital or be it practical. Everyone standing. Sunday we're going to have a wonderful time. Then on next Wednesday, now we're going to be on faith all the way through July. Amen? Y'all not clapping for that. We're going to be on faith all the way through July. And the Sundays that I preach, y'all better wear comfortable shoes. Because I plan on having church on Sundays. Did you enjoy tonight's teaching? Was it okay? Hey, sir, with your hands like that, what, what, what state are you from? New York. Because the Lord told me, tell him something, said now, he normally would run if he wants to, but tell him he needs to have faith for this. God says, tell him, after tonight's teaching, if he thinks it through, writes it on paper, tell him I just gave him a new address. You are definitely... I know y'all don't understand it. Watch. That's job. That's career. Uh-oh, he gone again. One day y'all gonna keep running around here to where God gonna have to give us a bigger church. Father, hope is, oh, there you go. I need to say something to you. No, 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 not about you. But tonight, if you would honor me with something, even if she sleep, I want you to get some anointing oil and touch your wife from under her buttocks all the way up her left back with oil. 
God says, I'm going to take that which is similar to a crooked spine. There's This is one of her emotional problems. This is serious. She acts like she's okay, God is good, but God says, I've got to give her more mobility without pain. She is a miracle not to be a cripple. She's supposed to be in a wheelchair often. But God says she refuses the wheelchair. There are two nerves that when it hurts, it fires. And she tries not to rely on anyone. But tonight, healing's in your hands. Oh, y'all are quiet, but I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out. See, only you can touch her in places we cannot. The reason why, now the Lord gave me clarity. But the reason why God has to heal her a little more and do this is because it's the only way they're going to fully okay the deal on paper. Uh oh, Shada Bahaya. Uh oh, Shata de Bahoshia Tamahaya. Yep. God said, if they see her like that in pain, they will not sign the release of that money. And the last thing I'm going to say is the Lord says the reason why these miracles took so long is the devil had God's permission for one more round of arguments and, 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 and disagreements between you and her to see which one would get sicker after the argument. God said tonight the devil loses. Make peace. Let there be our show. Let there be peace. Peace. God said for the past two years it was a test. And God said last week was the biggest test. It was a test. 